Happy Wednesday, everybody. How you doing? All right, all right, all right. Oh, you guys are great. So Democrats are freaking out that they peaked too early with just weeks to go before the midterms. Their celebrations were so premature, it reminds me of prom night. I know. I wish the election was in August, said one Democrat, as they watched their momentum fade like an electric car trying to get up a hill. And the polls have Republicans pulling away like Leo DiCaprio from a woman who just turned 26. Because <laughs> he likes him young, that's the joke, in case you missed it. All right. Even the New York Times sees a swing in independent women, which reminds me of the trapeze above Larry Kudlow's hot tub. Yeah. yeah. Huh? Is that creeping you out? All right. Of course, this pains the view who expected something so different. It's like they, they were given a generic adult diaper instead of their favorite brand. Here's Joy sounding more miserable than usual that voters are more focused on inflation and crime and not her usual obsessions like January 6th and fright wigs. Well, what's depressing is that the New York Times released a poll today that says that 71% of voters agree that democracy is under threat. Yeah. But only 7% of voters uh, rank a threat to democracy as a major issue this election cycle. Yeah. I find that so depressing, I can't begin to tell you. That's yeah. why I don't like polls. Hmm, talk about racist. No pierogies for you, Whoopi. No surprise, though, rather than focusing on the <laughs> that people care about, they went all in on Jan 6, failing to realize that a slick PowerPoint presentation on Trump Hitler does nothing to lower prices, cut crime, or seal the border. The only people who actually watched were the CNN producers currently in jail. All it did is provide masturbation fodder for anchors at MSNBC, and God knows they need it. <laughs> but they're missing the bigger trend. The wokesters are now realizing their BS no longer flies. Wokeism has fizzled out like a three-week-old bottle of ginger ale. And how do I know? Well, when the woke become the fodder on Dr. Phil, who is my second favorite doctor after Dr. Jill, <laughs> I like her because she dresses like my aunt's sofas. <laughs> so here's a sad group suggesting punishment for comedians. Why are comedians not even willing to come on college campuses anymore because they're scared to death they're going to say something that offends? The stereotypes used in um, comedic stand-up is just simply just like not okay anymore. Um, so you can say whatever you want, but you need to be also be ready for like the repercussions of what you say. I think that while social repercussions are nothing new, what we penalize people for saying is changing. And I think that that's a positive thing. Mm, it is a positive thing, but for a different reason, you dope. You know, wokeism has hit the wall when its proponents are treated like sideshow freaks on an afternoon talk show. In case you forgot, afternoons in the 80s and 90s, they were made for this. You stupid bitch, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> In the case of four-month-old Mariah, Raphael, you are not. <laughs> those. Those were the days. Sadly, those people could be running on a Democrat ticket and would do well today. Back then, bearded ladies were carnival acts. Now they're on school boards. But once you enter that phase and end up on an afternoon talk show, you're no longer something serious. You're the funniest thing on earth. And these people are truly unintentionally hilarious. Their demands, combined with zero life skills, turn them into baby Jerry Falwells. Funny, it used to be the old folks who railed against culture. But that's flipped. Now it's the young. Instead of don't trust anyone over 30, now you can't trust anyone under 30, at least to take a joke or pay their bills or listen to another point of view. Wokesters think everything that came before them was bigoted. But I can tell you right now, that's garbage. You know, here's a brief sample of some of the shows that I watched as a kid. What's making headlines today, dear? Oh, honey, <laughs> you stupid bitch. Don't you know news is a man's concern? Now, why don't you get back to the kitchen where you belong? <laughs> <laughs> Heart attack. 
<laughs> okay, everybody, it's a very exciting day. We get to meet our new boss, James Washington. What's up, how do you do? Oh. <laughs> what it is? <laughs> Mom, Dad, I'm gay. No! <laughs> yeah, that's how it used to be, if you believe the woke. But the tide is turning. You got Barack Obama urging Democrats to stop murdering joy. My family, my kids, you know, work that gives me satisfaction, uh, you know, Having fun, you know, not, you know, not not being a buzzkill, and, and sometimes Democrats are right. It's it's like, you know, sometimes you know people just want to not feel as if uh, they are walking on eggshells. Took him a while to get there, but uh, whew, I miss that, huh? You have states and companies denouncing ESG as shareholders discover woke investing is as smart as funding Alec Baldwin's next movie. Ooh, what's with this audience? What are you, she's <laughs> Louise. <laughs> Trying to do something about wokeism and you guys are thinking everything's in bad taste. You have woke products failing from comic books bent on identity politics to movies lecturing us on social issues that came and went like Billy Eichner's flick bros which is coming to a dumpster near you, <laughs> or on. <laughs> what? What do you mean? I don't, now you're laughing at that, it makes no sense. And have you seen a woke comedian lately? I haven't. The late night shows, always so careful to toe the PC line or dropping like Biden's dentures in a trick-or-treater's bag. So I'm optimistic. When a political movement is now a freakish curiosity, that's a good thing. And when Obama is sick of cancel culture, that's even better. My suggestion to the woke, it's time to turn over a new leaf. Smile, take a shower, work out, try to get laid. These are all four things I accomplished at Planet Fitness yesterday. <laughs> and talk to people, not about politics. Hell, try the weather. Not everything has to be a class struggle. When someone says to you, it's a beautiful day, don't say, hmm, not if you're trans. <laughs> try saying you're right, it feels like fall. Small talk actually bonds people, woke talk rips them apart. And maybe watch this show a few times a week and see how fun is done correctly. Because if you're young, there's still time for you to kick some ass in this world instead of whining like a little bitch. It's time to start thinking of an exit strategy from cancel culture to maybe canceling cancel culture itself. Let's welcome tonight's guests. For Halloween, he'll be dressing as a grown-up, host of the Guy Benson Show, Guy Benson. He's crushed more roles than Brian Stelter at the Country Buffet. Actor, comedian, and host of the Harland Highway podcast, Harlan Williams. She's like sunglasses, useful, stylish, but often left behind in a hotel bathroom. Fox News contributor, Cat Tim. And finally, he once bumped his head on the International Space Station. My massive sidekick in the NWA World Television Champion, Tyrus. <laughs> Harland, I am beyond pleased that you're here. Thank you, buddy. What a treat. Is it really a treat? Yeah. Are you ha happy to be here? We've been wor trying to, working on this for a long time. A long time, and now it's it's beyond a treat. It's a cinnamon treat. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very tasty. Yeah. A lot of icing on that, yeah. huh? Yeah. Yeah. Let it cool after the microwave, though. Oh, sweet and sour <laughs> smog grease. Yes, it's delicious. Yeah, I like to smear it on my chest. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll leave the light on for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Has, uh, what do you make it, has this affected your comedy at all? Did you have to change your material? You've been doing this for probably 35 years maybe, right? Yeah, I've been doing stand-up 35 years and it hasn't changed my material because I think what a lot of the woke culture's missing is they're assuming that if we do a bit or a joke about a culture or, or a sexual preference or anything like that, they immediately think maybe we're attacking it yeah. or we're going after it. 
But what they don't realize is a lot of time we're doing it for that specific group, recognizing that every group has a sense of humor mm -hmm. and you're hoping in your head, let's say you do a gay joke or a joke about a different race, mm -hmm. you're hoping that those guys at home going, oh, that's hilarious, I'm glad he did a joke about something that represents who I am. Exactly, it's, it, by yeah. the way, you're, you're basically saying welcome to the club. That's right, and yeah. by not doing jokes about it, you're eliminating those people and, you know, disenfranchising them even more and removing them from the pool. I did a set not too long ago where I was talking about uh, transgenders mm -hmm. and some guy in the front row lit me up and he goes, oh, easy topic to make fun of. And I said, I'm not making fun of it, mm -hmm. idiot. I'm trying to include you yeah. in the routine, hoping you'd find humor in hearing something about yourself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Is he trans in the audience or she trans? Well, no, what happened is brother uh, <laughs> tweeted me later and said he wasn't even trans. He was just looking to cause trouble. <laughs> so I, I said, hey, if you're going to be that woke, let me take you to Walmart. I'll buy you a Walmart sleeping bag and I'll zip it all the way up and you can go back to sleep, you woke freak. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're Thank well you. <laughs> yeah. That's an interesting use of a Walmart sleeping bag, I must say. You know, Guy, as someone who gets all their views from The View, uh, <laughs> do you think inflation is more or less important than democracy? Yeah. I mean, it is amazing, and you alluded to it in the monologue, how incredibly joyless that woman is, and her name is Joy. Right? Yes. She's, she's an expert on depression and sadness and frustration, and I think that you don't really understand how fully out of touch you are until you go on national television and whine to your like-minded rich friends that these annoying, unwashed masses care about what things cost instead of your particular pet issue. Mm -hmm. It's just a complete lack of understanding of how most people live, which is, I think, on brand for that show. And on the woke stuff, Barack Obama, with all due respect, was like the lecturer in chief for eight years. He would look down his nose and deliver these lectures to the country. And if even he is tired of yes. the exhausting woke culture, he's like, hey, like chill out and maybe have some fun. These guys are way out there, but they're not gonna stop until they're beaten. Like we yeah. have to actively beat them. Mm. And I feel like this show does that every yes. night. Yes, but you <laughs> But uh, I have to just point out, we do not advocate violence. Sometimes. <laughs> there are times we will advocate violence. D Kat, you advocate violence all the time. You're pr very pro-violence. Sure. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, um, do you buy that it's going away? Are you ready to forgive your woke friends who disowned you? I don't think they want me back. Oh. <laughs> That's how disowning works. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't think people who benefit from this want to give it up because I think the idea is they get to say, okay, I just want to be ever be sensitive. I don't want anyone to hurt my feelings. I don't think that's always true. I think there's people that can't wait to have their feelings hurt because mm -hmm. when their feelings hurt, that gives them power over other people mm -hmm. just by simply existing. Yeah. So I, I, this Dr. Phil thing, which I watched all of it. Of course you did. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Phil's great. I'm going to be home that's like sick from school and be like, wow, these people are nuts. <laughs> uh, it, it's... Um, they don't want to give that up and they're going to continue to do that. It's not about wanting to feel included. It's wanting to be in your own protected class that gives you power over other people and the ability to shut down other people's speech. Oh, you know, that just scared me, Tyrus. What Kat is suggesting is that w something worse will come along. That's what you just said. You said that it really doesn't go away. Sounds on brand for me. Yeah, it does. <laughs> they're they're going to up their victim game. Yes, yeah. exactly. You know, I, I do feel for uh, Joy. Yes. You know, she worked hard with her team for the last two years. You know, January 6th, they put a lot of time and effort into that. <laughs> episode after episode, tweet after tweet, and they only get a lousy 7%. <laughs> What are you watching? Come on, people. This I would be furious. Think about that. Yes. I spent all that time and energy. Yes. Working, making up, <laughs> just going, and seven percent. I might have cried on TV. Yes. You know, and so I feel for them. You know, because they're not out of touch. Like Guy said, the unwashed masses just don't get it. So mm -hmm. obviously, 
we're not going to rethink things. We're going to turn it up. Mm -hmm. We got to get an extra hour on The View. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to get more of the woke people on TV. And we got to have more Twitter videos of hearing people try to explain their pronouns <laughs> to normal functioning human beings and it not be hilarious while they're telling it. You know, when I hear that one, where like one was saying her pronoun was God and God-like because it is a being and not a being. Mm -hmm. I'm here and I'm not here, which is very similar to God. And then he said, are you here now? <laughs> <laughs> to which it said, you can't ask me that. <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.